right into today's lesson. Today's lesson, uh, the love language of today is acts, acts of passion. <laughs> oh, I love this. Acts of passion. Thank you, Lord. What, is, what does acts of passion uh, look like? Acts of passion is to be uh, desired, to, to be desired or wanted. Do you know that people, people want to be desired? People want to be wanted. You know, nobody, nobody wants to be rejected or, or not, uh, not liked. And so too it is with God. You know, God, <laughs> God wants us to want him. Hallelujah. You know, it's possible to be saved. You believe God. But then it's also possible to not want him all the time. You know, but God wants to be desired. He wants to be wanted. Amen. And he wants a genuine relationship with us. And so that's what we're going to dive into today. Acts of passion. watching um, my name is Israel love thank you for taking the time to tune in to our, our YouTube channel and I'm here with our heaven embassy church uh, people God is good amen and so today we're gonna dive into our teaching we're on a series on love and it's been powerful hallelujah this is our third lesson and I want to encourage you to go to our uh, YouTube channel, Heaven Embassy Church. Go and, and subscribe and just be blessed by these teachings that are powerful and they will change your life, help you to be a strong believer in the Lord. God wants us to grow from glory to glory, from faith to faith, and from love to love. Amen. Any uh, anything you want to manifest, anything that you want to manifest in your life, all you have to do is to begin to study that thing in the Bible. If you want healing to manifest in your life, begin to read scriptures of he healing and study healing. If you want faith to manifest in your life, begin to study on faith, whatever you want. And we are on our study of, of love. And love is powerful. How many know that love is powerful? Yes, love is powerful. And so I'm excited. So today, uh, last week, we touched on the importance of how, uh, how we are to love with our mind, loving with your mind. Jesus tells us that we're to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. What does that mean? How does that look like? And, and that's what we're going to uh, get into. And so last week we touched about, we talked about how important it is to love God with our mind. And we said the love language of that is called acts of thoughtfulness. Acts of thoughtfulness. Uh, when you love someone with your mind, you are thinking about them. You know, God wants us to have him on our mind. He wants to be on your mind. You know, he doesn't want to be forgotten. Throughout the scriptures, the Lord talks about, uh, remember me, remember me, remember me. Remember him in everything we do. We're to do it to the glory of God. Amen. And so that was last week's teaching. And the week before that, we, we said that love is a root. Love is a root. So it's important that we're to be rooted in love. And what does that mean? What does it mean to be rooted in love? Well, it means that your love for the Lord is what's going to hold you when hard times come. 
It's your love that's going to hold you. You know, when you love someone, you won't leave them. When you love someone, you won't leave them. Why? Because you love them. You know, uh, come rain, come shine, come wind, come storm, come whatever may come. And when you truly love someone, you won't leave them. And so when you truly love Jesus with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, no matter what happens, you know, you will not leave him. And so love is your root for your salvation. You know, love is your root for your salvation. And so you need to be rooted and grounded in love. So we, we touched on that. Uh, that was the first lesson. So we're going to get right into today's lesson. Today's lesson, uh, the love language of today is acts, acts of passion. <laughs> oh, I love this. Acts of passion. Thank you, Lord. What, is, what does acts of passion uh, look like? Acts of passion is to be uh, desired, to, to be desired or wanted. Do you know that people, people want to be desired? People want to be wanted. You know, nobody, nobody wants to be rejected or, or not, uh, not liked. And so too it is with God. You know, God, <laughs> God wants us to want him. Hallelujah. You know, it's possible to be saved. You believe God. But then it's also possible to not want him all the time, you know, but God wants to be desired. He wants to be wanted. Amen. And he wants a genuine relationship with us. And so that's what we're going to dive into today. Acts of passion. And we're going to read some scriptures. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. And so I'm reminded of a passage when the disciples were walking with Jesus. Two disciples were walking with Jesus. This was after his death and resurrection. And they were not aware that Jesus was risen because he appeared to them in another form. And so we're going to start reading uh, Luke chapter 24 from verse 27 to 32, 32. And it reads, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded, which is Jesus, unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, hallelujah, saying, abide with us, for it is toward evening. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were open and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said to one, one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? Glory to God. Amen. Are your, are your heart, is your heart burning for the Lord? And, and I'm not just talking about burning in the sense of zeal and, and, uh, uh, for the Lord. No, I'm talking about burning in the sense of passion. See, it's one thing to have faith and zeal for the Lord, but it's another thing to have passion, uh, to desire him. Glory to God. The scripture said that they, they constrained him. You know, you can tell when you, when, when someone wants you, they, they, they hold you, they constrain you. You want to do something, but they say, no, uh, stay with us. This is how the Lord desires for us to want him. He wants to be wanted. And their hearts burned. Amen. 
Do you, is your heart burning for Jesus? To spend time with him, to, to, um, to, to go to church, to read the Bible, just, just to get closer to the Lord. Are you hungry and thirsty for more of the Lord? Amen. So, you know, anything that's, anything that's uh, dead is, has no emotion. You know, if, if you see a dead corpse, you'll see there's no emotion. There's no, it doesn't get hungry, it doesn't get thirsty. It has no emotion. You see, a dead relationship has no emotion. There's no passion. That relationship is dead. But when you are in love with the Lord, glory to God, thank you. When there is passion, when, when there is um, love for the Lord, you, you, it comes with your emotion. There's a burning in your heart to, to know him more and more. Glory to God. There's a burning in your heart to know him more and more. And that's what the Lord wants from us. They constrain him. Constrain the Lord today. Constrain him. Say, Lord, stay a little longer. You know, the presence, when you feel that presence, after a while it leaves, right? You're singing to the Lord. You're reading your word. And, and then, uh, and sometimes you wish, man, if that, if that presence can just stay with me, I'm, I'm the tangible presence. You know, we know he's with us. He said he will never leave us. But I'm talking about that his tangible presence. You can constrain him. You can constrain the Holy Spirit. Go, Holy Spirit, stay a little longer. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Is your heart burning for the Lord? Do you love him with all your heart? Is there passion? Is there passion to constrain him? Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so we see another passage here. I like uh, Song of Songs or Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. And it says, As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight. And his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. You see, the Lord loves us. And, you know, the scripture says that, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> the scripture says that he comes and he's knocking. He's knocking at the door of our heart. You know what he's looking for? He's looking for our love. Because he could have been knocking at other parts of our body. He could have said, he's knocking at the door of our mind. Or he's knocking at the door of our, I don't know. <laughs> Back. When he says heart, the reason why it says heart is because He's looking for our love. He, he, he longs for our love. He longs for our love. He says he's standing at the door. Let's read that. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, uh, hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Revelations. Revelations chapter 3. It says, Behold, I stand at the door 
and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. You know, you don't, you don't just have dinner with anyone. You have dinner with the people you love. The Lord is longing for our love and he's knocking at the door of our heart. He's knocking at the door of our hearts. Another scripture I want to read here. Uh, we see here in Songs of Solomon. Songs of Solomon, it says, chapter five, verse two, I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. See, we're the bride of Christ. We're his bride. And so the Lord wants a relationship of love. He's knocking at the door of our heart. This is, this is not for you to be saved. When, when, this is for saved people already. He's not knocking at the door. If you're unsaved, he's knocking at the door of your heart for you to be saved. That's faith. But if you're already saved, he still knocks at the door of your heart. But this time it's for love. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to spend time with you. Can we constrain him? Like those disciples that say, stay with us a little longer. Stay with us a little longer. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Help us to fall in love with you, Jesus. So how can you express your passion and love for the Lord with your heart? How can you love the Lord with your heart? Here's one of the ways you can love the Lord with your heart is by reading the word, studying the word and, and hearing the word of God, just like, it, just like you're hearing right now. Why? Because Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. He's the word of God. So whenever you're studying the word or hearing the word, you're spending time with Jesus. I want to read Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. It says, now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. <laughs> Mary chose that good part. She chose that good part. That means that she had a, a choice to go help her sister. And don't get me wrong. I mean, she, Martha was doing a, a good thing, preparing a nice meal for Jesus. Man, 
I know it must have been delicious. You preparing a meal for Jesus? But you see, even in our love for the Lord, there's rank. Do you know that, uh, that uh, God and Jesus, they have love languages too. And, um, and there is rank in ways to love the Lord. And some are higher than others. So even though Martha was serving the Lord, but Mary, what she was doing was more important. Why? Because it had to do with the word. The word. What did the Lord say to Peter in John uh, 21? He said, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. You see, the word of God is is the number one way you can love the Lord is by you spending time with the word. Spending time with the word because the word is Jesus. Hallelujah. So Mary chose the one thing that's needful. Amen. The one thing that's needful. And so we also see here uh, in Psalms chapter 1, it says, uh, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, that word delight, is also love. His, his love or his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day day. And night. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Can you fall in love with the word? If you fall in love with the word of God, you fall in love with Jesus because Jesus is the word of God. Amen. 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 You know, there's so many be benefits for loving Jesus. I mean, loving Jesus. I'm not just talking about being a Christian, but loving Jesus. <laughs> and you know, one of the benefits for loving the Lord is that he will give you the desires of your heart. It's just like when a, uh, when a parent is loved by their kids. Most of the time, they always get what they want. <laughs> because one particular child uh, loves uh, the parent more. And in most cases, the parent is more likely to give whatever they're requesting to them. God is the same way. We're all his kids, but who can love him more? <laughs> he usually gives the desire of the child that loves him more. That's how God works. It says here in Psalms chapter 37 verse 4 it says, "Delight thyself in the Lord." and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Delight means also to desire. So you're sowing the seed of desire to God. Guess what he's gonna do? He's gonna give you a harvest of desire. What do you want, my son? What do you want, my daughter? <sighs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. 
I mean, God is bound to give you the world if you, if you can just touch his heart. Oh, if you can just pour your love on him. I mean, the, the world won't even be enough. He said, I'm not just going to give you the world. I'm going to give you other planets. <laughs> Glory to God. Man. Lord, we love you. Anybody love the Lord? So, loving God will give you the desires of your heart. Also, loving God, desiring him, will also give you inheritance from him. And uh, there's a, a message that our spiritual father taught us about inheritance by lineage. And there are things you can receive by faith or by um, paying the price or, or by working for it. For example, when you go to work, they pay you. They pay you for your labor. God is the same way. God is a rewarder. He will pay you when you when you when you work for him. When you do work for him, God will pay you. He will he will reward you. Whether you're fasting, praying, uh, witnessing, if you're working for the Lord, he will pay you. So that's one way to receive from the Lord by getting paid because you paid, you, you worked for that. Another way to receive from the Lord is by um, buying from him. And what I mean by that is it's like a, a trade or exchange. You know, you go to the store, right? Uh, you have money. And you purchase what you want, you know. So a lot of times we get things from God because we have the, uh, the currency, the spiritual currency, the treasures in heaven to to get the thing that we're asking. You know, there well, there's banks in heaven. We have an account in heaven. It's called the treasures in heaven. And so when you do things for God, you know. You're, you're storing up your treasures in heaven and you can debit, you can withdraw from your spiritual currency for you to uh, get what you want here on earth. But then this third way is different from the previous two. It's called uh, inheritance. Inheritance. What's an inheritance? An inheritance is something you receive, be uh, something that's passed down to you because of your relationship with someone. You know, your relationship with someone. In this case, it's our daddy in heaven, our daddy, right? Daddy God. So you can receive things. Uh, that uh, that is an inheritance. Something can be passed down to you. And this is what we learned from our, our spiritual father, David Taylor, is that, let's say, for example, you know, the men and women of God that has gone before us and they had certain spiritual gifts, you know, healing, prophecy, uh, you name it, whatever it is. Uh, even in the Bible, you know, Apostle Paul, Elijah, Moses, all these things you see how God used certain men and women of God, even Solomon with his wisdom. Everything you see in the Bible can be passed down to you. You can inherit it because you're part of the family. You're part of the family of God. But how do you get it? Because it's an inheritance. You can get it by paying the price, right? You can get it by working for it, but you can also get it by inheritance. And inheritance is given through 
Love. Love. <laughs> you guys, love is the secret. That's how you, you get an inheritance from the Lord. Let's read the scriptures. Ooh, this is good. Ooh, this is good stuff. So many benefits. Uh, Isaiah 58, verse 14 says, Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. There's the, the delight, right? Loving him. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage. You see that? Of Jacob. The heritage of Jacob, thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Also, we see Psalms 47, verse 4. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. You see, he gives his inheritance to us through love. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Do you want God to fill your treasures? And and I, I'm not just talking about natural treasures. That's not excluded. That's included too. But I'm also talking about spiritual treasures. The riches of Christ. Spiritual gifts. You name it. Whatever you consider as treasure. God can fill your treasure if you love him. If you love him. If you love him, you know, I had an, uh, I had a dream I'm going to share with you guys. And in the dream, <clears throat> I, uh, I was with, uh, prophet TV Joshua and most of you, uh, might know who he is. He's a, he's a, he was a powerful, uh, healer, deliver, miracle worker of the Lord. You know, God used him to do mighty miracles. And so, so I'm with him. I, and uh, so in the dream, I'm asking him, uh, I'm asking Prophet TV Joshua, give me uh, your, your mantle or your, your anointing. Give me your mantle, your anointing. And he tells me, Jesus, go ask Jesus. And he points over there. And so, so I go over to Jesus. <laughs> so I say, Jesus, give me Prophet TV Joshua's mantle. And you know what Jesus told me? He said, love me. He said, love me. And, uh, when I woke up, I was like, love you. Lord, I do. I love you. What do you mean love you? <laughs> so there's measures of love. There's degrees of love. So there's the level of love whew, that you can give God and he will give you an inheritance, something that's been passed on for years from generation to generation. And this is this is um, this is the teaching that uh, it's actually I believe it's on YouTube. It's called Inheritance by Lineage. I want to encourage you guys to go to uh, uh, Joshua Media Ministries on YouTube. You can watch that teaching by my spiritual father David E. Taylor. Inheritance by Lineage, and uh, he goes more in detail of that. But when you love the Lord, when you love the Lord, one of the benefits of loving the Lord is you can receive an inheritance. And all these men and women of God we read in scripture, Solomon, Moses, Elijah, Abraham, anything that you see that you like in, in the scriptures, oh man, I love, 
I love Apostle Paul and, the, and I love, man, I wish God can use me like him or I love, you name it, you fill in the blank. You can receive that inheritance and the key to receiving that inheritance, the th what they have is by you loving the Lord. Loving the Lord, just just continue loving the Lord, and and as as and it, when it gets to the right measure, I'm telling you, God will give you that thing that that you've been wanting, but you gotta love Him. You gotta you gotta love Him. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You guys being blessed? Isn't this good? Glory to God, hallelujah. Another thing, mm, thank you, Holy Spirit. Another benefit of loving the Lord is loving God will cause him to come to us, to manifest. <laughs> this is another teaching by my spiritual father, David Taylor. <laughs> loving God will cause him to come to us. You know, you guys, you can see Jesus right now and Jesus can appear to you. You don't have to wait to heaven to see Jesus. This is, this is, um, the grace that's on, uh, my spiritual father, David E. Taylor, that Jesus can appear to you. Jesus can appear to you, but one of the ways that you can get God to come to you is by loving him. Let's see the scripture here. Um, Malachi chapter three, verse one says, behold, I will send my messenger. Who thank you, Lord. And he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in, whom you love. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. When you delight in the Lord, he's going to come to you. He's going to appear to you. But you got to delight in him. You got to constrain him. Glory to God. John chapter 14, verse 18, Jesus himself said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. Those are the words of Jesus. And you know, sometimes when we're reading the word, we try to, um, we try to spiritualize everything and, and make it figuratively. But this is not figurative. This is literal. He will come to you. You will see Jesus. He can come in, in your dreams, in a vision, or he could actually come in real life. Many people have seen Jesus. Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, he came to Jesus. I mean, uh, Jesus came to the Apostle Paul and many others. And even today, I'm telling you, of course, I've read uh, my spiritual father's book, David, uh, by David E. Taylor. It says, face-to-face uh, -face appearance from Jesus. Of course, after I'm going to show you. Actually, I'll show you right now since we're talking about it. So I read this book, and the Lord appeared to me. And ever since I connected with my spiritual father, the Lord's been coming to me. So th these things are real, you guys. These things are real. And through love, when you love the Lord, he will come to you. So these are some of the benefits. Thank you, Lord. And of course, there's so many more, so many more, but I think we're going to stop here. So many other benefits of loving the Lord. Ah, oh, Lord, I love you. Thank you. Acts of passion. 
to be desired, to be wanted. God wants to be desired. He wants to be wanted. And that's a love language. When God sees that you want, that you want him, oh, he's going to come to you. That's how you draw him, you guys. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, all right. Uh, amen. Amen. Glory to God. So we're going to, we're going to take uh, some, um, <laughs> so if you guys, if you guys have anything to say, I want to go ahead and let you guys um, unmute and and go ahead and, and comment or if you have any questions, you can do that and then I'll pray for everyone. Hallelujah. Acts of Passion. What's a wonderful class. I love it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, yeah. Gabby. Amen. It's Praise a good God. question. It's a good question for the week. You know, I started heart burning for the Lord. Is it? You know, to spend time with the Bible, be thirsty for Him at all times. And I like what you say that the lot love is the root you know that take us to salvation the, you know it's going to help us and hold us in the hard time mm -hmm. love it's like a marriage you know god is married with the church too and it's like the hard time will be you know we're going to be able to to hold on them because of the love because there's no love there's nothing to hold on yeah. everything get destroyed so the key is the love amen that's right for every relationship amen. Yeah. Amen. it was wonderful i love every point that you gave us uh every bible verse for us to acknowledge and to read and reread mm -hmm. um yeah, whoever needs, um, Amen. They can whoever go needs in. a homework, call me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen, Gabby. You take good notes. Praise God. Amen. Anyone else? You know, yes. um, up the head. No, go ahead, honey. I was just going to see, uh, say. That God loves us so much that He wants to be loved in return for the way that He loves us. And to not, you know, return that love to Him, it, it is like it is rejection. Yeah. It is a rejection. And we don't want to reject God. I know we don't think so um, when we don't um, you know um, when we don't get close to him when he's calling on us when he's saying whispering to us come closer get a little close to me and and we just you know take it for granted or, or we don't come closer to him that is actually re rejection to him we don't want to do that. No. I just want to say that. Yes. Mm. Because okay. he loved us too much. We want to acknowledge him for the love that he gave. It, it, not that it's, we just want to get stuff from God. We just want to return the love that he's given to us. It, mm. it's, it's, it's a reward for, for doing that. But we just want to, to show him our love. Oh. Hallelujah. Lord, glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We love you. Amen. 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 One, one of the goals this year for me is going to be be more like Mary. 
because I'm a lot, lot like Martha. Amen. Hallelujah. I need to be more like Mary. Yes. Yeah, I want to add to uh, what uh, prophetess um, Maya said. Actually, the scripture uh, Pastor Israel read it before, but he didn't read it from the verse that I'm I'm reading. Is Proverbs eight from verse seventeen. It says, I love those who love me, and those who love me, uh, sorry, I love those who love me, and those who seek me shall find me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. I yield, uh, surpasses choice of silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the path of justice, bestowing, that's where Pastor Israel read, the rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasure full. So yes, it's true what Pastor was saying that, you know, those who love God, they end up really being blessed, you know, uh, with whatever God has, you know, when you, you love someone, you end up receiving what they have because, you know, love is more, is stronger than things, actually. And even for our father, the love he has for us, when we respond, is stronger than what he has. So he can give us the kingdom because he loves us, but he, he wants to respond to the love. You know, one of the amazing thing is, um, in Hosea from um, chapter three, God talks about, he tells Hosea the prophet to go marry a prostitute. And you guys can read there by yourself. Um, and the reason he told him to marry a prostitute is because he wanted to demonstrate how much he loved the, the, the children of Israel, you know? And that prostitute kept going away, but guess what? God keeps saying to Jose, okay, go get her again. You know, for those who have experienced the love of God, you know that to be true. Sometimes we go out there and do our own thing. But whenever we are ready to come back, God will always receive us. What a loving God we have, a loving Father. Amen. And... Um, you know, also, I want to share oh one scripture, and I'm done. I love this scripture so much, it touches me. It's Ezekiel um, 16 from verse 8. It says, Now I passed by thee and looked upon thee. Behold, thy time was the time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yeah, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, says the Lord God, and thou became mine. You know, it's such a sweet scripture because, you know, God doesn't love us only when we are in our high place. Like, you know, here Israel was naked. And that's when God came and spread his skirt and covered yes. Israel. You know, he does that with us. It's another thing for someone to love someone who everybody will love. But guess if our daddy, he loves us mm. in our lowest. He Amen. covers us. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. With his love. Hallelujah. I love Amen. my daddy. Thank you, Pastor Favor. Amen. Yeah. So it's 16 8, right? Ezekiel 16 yes. 8. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. That's beautiful. Amen. Thank you all for sharing. Hallelujah. So let me go ahead and um let me go ahead and pray for the people. And um and then uh, we'll talk some more uh, after you guys, uh, after we go off, offline. So let me go ahead and pray for everyone. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Lord. God, we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, if you're watching and you need uh, healing in your body, I want you to just um, lay your hand wherever you, that you feel the pain or sickness. The Lord's going to heal you now. And I want you to forgive. If you have any unforgiveness in your heart, forgive those that... Um, Forgive everyone. Forgive everyone. Release them because unforgiveness is a hindrance to your healing. So I'm going to give you a moment right now to forgive everyone. And then I'm going to pray for you. command sickness to leave your body now. I rebuke this sickness. I command it to leave your body. In the name of Jesus, Satan, loose God's people. Loose them now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I rebuke this sickness. Loose her body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Be free. I curse this sickness. I curse it in Jesus' name. I curse it right now. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is removing this sickness from your body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is healing you right now. He's healing you right now. You're being healed right now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment is condemned. The Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. Those that are have a addiction or some type of bondage or burden. God wants to deliver you now. Uh, he wants to remove every oppression from you. Be free right now, you devil of darkness. I command you to leave God's people. I remove this burden off of them. <sighs> Who the sun makes free is free indeed. I remove this burden. I remove this burden. I remove this burden off of you right now. The Lord sets you free. The Lord sets you free. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bring you to the courts of heaven. Lord, if there's any way they've sinned against you, I ask, I repent on, on behalf of their sins. I repent on behalf of the sins of their ancestors. If there's any legal hold, I ask you to remove any legal hold. Let your blood begin to speak for them. Let your blood speak mercy over them. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mercy, Lord, have mercy. In Jesus' name, the Lord heals you. The Lord delivers you. The Lord makes you free. Every road blockage, let it be removed from your life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For those that need a financial miracle, prosperity, I want to pray for you, for your finances right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is releasing prosperity angels to you now. Prosperity angels are being released to you now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you, I bless you, I bless you, and indeed you are blessed in Jesus' name. The Lord prosper you from this day forward in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you've never spoken tongues and you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, just go ahead and open your mouth now and begin to, to say Jesus. As you're saying Jesus, the Lord will fill you and you're going to start speaking a new language. So open your mouth and just start saying Jesus. The Lord will fill you right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Receive. There it is. Thank you, Lord. 
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Receive, receive, receive. Out of your belly flow rivers of living water. Ooh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for filling your people. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to make a decision right now to receive Jesus. Make a decision to follow him. You have to make a decision. It's, it's all it is is a decision. And then you ask God to forgive you of your sins. It's that simple. God, forgive me of my sins. I want to make a decision to follow you. And when you pray that prayer and it's sincere, God will do it. God will do it and you'll be born again. Hallelujah. You'll be born again. And then I want to encourage you to get baptized. Go to a church and get baptized. Uh, you can contact us if you need to be baptized. Amen. And um, start your journey on uh, to be saved. Amen. And stay saved. <laughs> Glory to God. Of course, last but not least, uh, I did this earlier. I want to do it again. A uh, face-to-face appearance from Jesus. My spiritual father wrote this book. You need to get this book. Jesus will appear to you when you get this book, when you read it. And I'm not just talking about buying the book and, and putting it under your pillow. <laughs> no, you need to read it. You need to read it. Amen. And I read this book and the Lord appeared to me. So I know this is for real. Get the book, read it, and be expecting the Lord is going to appear to you. You can get it on Amazon or you can get it on uh, joshuamediaministries.org. The Lord is going to come to you. Amen. This is one of the ways you love him. Read this book. When you read this book, you're loving the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Well, thank you all for joining me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Remember, God loves you. I love you. And remember, love God and love people and you'll be all right. God bless you. See you next time.